In this exercise, we are asked to describe in our own words what the benefits are which are indicated with the present value which are implied by the present value random variables that you see given here in part A and in part B of the exercise. So these are random variables and they refer to the present value of a specific stream of cash flows and we need to describe what this cash flow stream is in our own words. And next to that, we're also asked to write down an expression in terms of actuarial functions, so that means using international actuarial notation for the expected present value. So that means that we're gonna calculate the expected value of the random variable that is referred to, that is described in part A and in part B of this exercise. So let us start with part A. So we've got there a random variable, y1, and the random variable makes a distinction between tx being less than or equal to 15 and tx being above 15. Uh, tx, as we know, it's the future lifetime in continuous time of an individual who is currently age x, right? So if I picture a timeline, for this particular product referred to in part A of the exercise. So this is the age and this is time. And then we have this anchoring point at x plus 15, which corresponds to time 15. So what do we see? That uh, we're working here with a product, a life annuity product, that works in continuous time. And how do I recognize that? Because of the bar on top of the small a. So that refers to a life annuity paying continuously at an annual rate of one euro, let's say, per year, right? But we see that if the tx is less than or equal to 15, that the duration of this uh, annuity that is referred to is then driven by the random variable tx, is determined by the... Um, by the random variable tx. So that means we're working here with a life annuity that works in continuous time, that pays at an annual rate of one, let's say, euro per year, right? And this uh, product will only pay a cash flow to my policyholder if my policyholder is alive at uh, that point in time. If we're going to look at what is going on beyond time 50, so then we see that if our policyholder is surviving until age x plus 15 or beyond, that then the duration of our cash flow is limited uh, to 15 years. That's what you recognize over here. So in this present value random variable, the duration of the cash flow stream is limited to 15 years. So that means in case you survive beyond time 15, there are no additional payments, right? So here I've got no additional payments. So what is going on here? is the situation of a so-called um, term life annuity. Uh, so I've got a term life annuity issued to X with a duration of, or with a term of 15 years, which is payable in continuous time as long as x is alive, at a rate of 1 euro per year. So the EPV of this product is then what we recognize as the EPV of a term life annuity with a duration of 15 years issued to a policyholder HX. It works in continuous time, so hence the bar on top of my A notation. So that's for part A. If we then look at the present value random variable as described in part B of the exercise, then we see that we're going to deal with the random variable kx. And this kx 
is the curted future lifetime, as you may recall. So the kx, it's the floor function applied to dx, so it's my curted future lifetime, in this case of an x-year-old. Right? And if we look at the, the notation that is used over here, we recognize the small a, so we're dealing with annuity products. It's a small a, there is no bar, there is no double dot, so that means we're dealing here with an annuity that pays at the end of the year, right? So it's an immediate annuity. And if we make a timeline, what we recognize here then for part b is that we've got h, we've got time, and again we put an anchoring point at time 50. And uh, what we see is that if the kx um, takes a value between 0 and 15, then the present value random variable takes as the value the present value of an annuity certain that works, that pays at the end of the year, with in total 15 payments, right? So what does that mean? That means that these first... 15 payments are guaranteed, no matter whether our policyholder is alive or not. So we're dealing here with a stream of payments from time 1 up to time 15, and they are guaranteed. There is no stochasticity, there is no condition on the policyholder being alive or not. How do I know that? Once again, because if the kx takes a value between 0 and 15, and in any case, the present value of the cash flow stream, cash flow streams, cash flow stream uh, that is covered under this contract, uh, takes as the present value the present value of an annuity certain, immediate annuity certain, with in total 15 payments. So these 15 payments are guaranteed, no matter whether our policyholder is alive or not. If we then go beyond time 15, what we then see is that the cash flow stream becomes life contingent. So the cash flow stream will only be paid if X is alive, is alive at the end of a specific uh, year, right? So um, what do we see? Um, there is a benefit in this product, a benefit of one euro per year. It's payable annually at the end of the year, 2x, the payments are being guaranteed for the first 15 years and they are payable thereafter only if x is alive, right? So, um, for example, if the x, if the kx takes a value equal to 16, for instance, right, then there will be the 15 guaranteed payments and there will be one additional payment here at time 16, right? So if the kx is equal to 16, then my policyholder will receive in total 16 payments payable at the end of the year, right? If the kx is equal to 15, right, then my policyholder will just receive these 15 guaranteed payments. So if I need to put down the EPV in international actuarial notation, then what I'm going to uh, work with is an, um, an annuity in discrete time, which pays in arrears, issued to X. Um, so if I need to write down the EPV of the cash flow, stream that is um, specified under the contract in part B of the exercise, then first of all, I've got, of course, my annuity certain, which works uh, in arrear with a duration of 15 years. And then I've got a deferred life annuity with a period of deferment of 15 years that is starting um, from time uh, 50, 50 on that will pay an annual amount of, of one euro at the end of the year if my policyholder is alive. Um, 
and this will work uh, for the rest of his um, lifetime. So I can write that as follows, that's my deferred life annuity, but of course we know for the deferred life annuity we can also see it as our actuarial discount factor, 15EX, multiplied with then a whole life uh, annuity issued to X plus 15, payable in arrears uh, for the rest of uh, the lifetime of my policyholder. So this is the product that I need to consider um, in part B of the exercise.